Hello and welcome to a video on BJT DC characteristics. It's the first video um, of a bunch where we're heading towards BJT amplifier design. So we need to start at some point and the best starting point is to start off with the DC characteristics and understanding the flow of currents in the BJT and the voltages surrounding it. Um, so let's dive in. So we are going to look at the current characteristics, the voltage characteristics, the fact that a BJT is non-linear and then the temperature dependency of our BJT. So first off, a BJT is a current controlled current source. So the base current controls the collector current. The emitter current is the total of these two, so with Kirchhoff's law, IB plus IC should be IE. And this arrow here indicates the direction of current flow in the device. So this arrow indicates to us where the maximum amount of current is flowing, and we know that from there we should do something with it. Right. The collector current and the VCE voltage is the two important DC parts that we usually want because they go into the modeling and characteristics of our BJT amplifier and is very important when we are designing. Right. Our collector current is also connected to our VBE voltage. Right, which we can relate to the base current if we really want, but the VBE voltage is what we use to define this current amplifier into a transconductance amplifier because we typically want to amplify a voltage at some point, not necessarily a current. So we can either work with currents or voltages. I tend to go with the voltage model in the end but the VBE is also important to biasing our transistor and having it switched on in the right region okay then we know that our NPN and PNP transistors react similar with some minor differences and we will get to that in a short moment and one of the things that we need to know is that the beta value of a DC current gain of a transistor changes with temperature and it also differs from transistor to transistor. I'm not meaning with um, from different component numbers. They could have been fabricated on the same day, can be with the same model number, and the one can have a beta value of 100 and the other one a beta of 150. Okay, so it's a bit unpredictable. And if you're doing biasing circuits, this is something you need to cater for. Right, so that is some of the BJT stuff in a nutshell here. Let's go over to our current characteristics. So as we said, IB is the control valve of our BJT and it controls the collector current. So the collector current is large, the base current is small and they have a relation with one another and that is our beta value. So the beta is our current gain of our transistor. Right, so it's IC over IB or IC is beta times IB. So you need to get to know these two quite well. These equations are going to be used regularly. Okay, then following the current flow, we know that the arrow here indicates where the maximum amount of current is flowing, and that's our emitter current. You also need to know the terminals of your transistor quite, quite well. Because we talk about the base resistor, it's sitting at the base, the emitter resistor is sitting at the emitter. It might have a different number on a schematic, 
but that is the trans uh, the resistor being referred to. Okay, also with the currents and even the names of the voltages. This is the voltage between the base and the emitter and the voltage between the collector and the emitter. Okay, so you need to get to know the component quite well and where all of these are located. Okay, back on point. This arrow indicates a maximum amount of current flow and that is our emitter current which is the sum of the base and the collector. This current can only flow in, this one can only flow in and it needs to go somewhere so it's flowing out at the emitter, so the emitter is the collector plus the base. Then there is a relation of collector to base current and we can plug that in into the next um, equation and we have our emitter current is beta times IB plus IB and we can figure that beta plus 1 is the relation of our base current to our emitter current. Okay, then there is another parameter that will show up in texts and that is alpha. Alpha is the relation between the collector current and the emitter current. Beta will typically be a large value. Alpha will usually be smaller than 1. Okay, because the collector current is slightly smaller than the emitter current. So it's just another way of writing it. So if you want the collector current from the emitter current, you just multiply the emitter with alpha and you have your collector current. You don't need to know alpha, you can do everything with betas. You can also do everything with alphas if you want. Okay, but this does show up in text on a regular basis and there is some uses for alpha that can make life a bit easier. But alpha is usually very close to 1, beta as a value is a bit more or a better indicator of the current gain rather than alpha over here. Okay, so for the PNP there is some differences. The emitter is the maximum amount of current and it flows into our transistor. So this is a normally on device and beta um, sorry, the base current needs to flow out of a transistor and the collector current needs to flow out of the transistor. Small changes. Um, a PNP will be orientated in a different direction than the PNP. So the collector is on top of the NPN and with the PNP the emitter would be on top for our current flow to be in the same direction. Our biasing for voltages happens on top. The base current is flowing out, but in terms of equations, everything still looks the same. The emitter current is still the sum of the base and the collector. So all of these equations work out exactly the same way as with our NPN device. Right, so we have beta is IC over IB, which is our current gain. Alpha is the relation of the collector current and the emitter current. And if you plug these equations into one another, right, if you define alpha and you take IC and plug it in here and you take IE and plug it in here, you get the transformation between alphas and betas. And if you take this alpha equation and just rewrite it to have beta as the, the topic here, you get the relation from beta, um, from alpha to beta. So that is kind of nice that you can convert between the two. As I said, you can work with beta alone, it won't affect you that much. Um, if we take the equation alpha is IC over IE, and if we start to make 
are beta larger right larger and larger and larger this alpha will start to approach one and if alpha approaches one our emitter current will become the same as our collector current which means that our base current is roughly zero so for extremely large values of beta our collector and emitter current can be seen as the same current since the base current is very small we make this assumption to make our life much easier when dealing with the mathematics. So every time when a beta value is kind of much larger than 100 or larger than 100, we can start to employ this approximation. Um, it just makes things much easier. So you just write that beta is quite large and that IC and IE is approximately the same. However, if your beta tends to be very small or you want to exactly calculate something don't make this assumption for power transistors something like a bd241 um, the beta is 25 or 10 at high currents you can't make this assumption anymore beta is not that large so then you're gonna have to go through all the steps and pains to get everywhere Okay, so this is kind of a nice page to memorize. This is valid for NPNs and PNPs. So it's quite, quite nice. Right, the voltage characteristics. Our BJT has three regions in which it can operate. The cutoff, saturation, and active region. Okay. The cutoff region is where our transistor is off. Okay, and that is where our VBE value is less than 0 0.5 volts. Typically, we consider the transistor to be on at 0.7, but it roughly switches on at 0.5 already. Okay, 0.7 is where you can actually kind of see the results. Okay, so if our VBE is less than 0.5 volts, our IC should be zero and our IB should be zero. Our transistor is off. Okay, so this is when it's acting like a switch. Um, when you're driving something from a microcontroller or whatnot, you're probably going to use the cutoff and the saturation region. So saturation is when the BJT is fully switched on. Okay, it draws the maximum amount of current and we call that our saturation current through our collector and our VCE value on our transistor should be around 0.2 volts which we call deep saturation okay our VBE will still be around 0.7 volts a bit higher it's it's in the range of 0.7 our collector current will be our saturation and the relation of IC and IB is called beta forced and beta forced is much smaller than our actual beta value right because at some point the collector current is going to flow and the base current can be increased and increased and our collector current will not increase anymore so that our beta value will start to drop Okay, because our transistor is fully on and drawing the maximum amount of current that can flow through it and that is beta forced that's when in inverted commas the current gain of our transistor so if you ever read about beta forced that is when it's pushed into saturation and our vce value is at 0.2 volts or 0.3 to 0.2 thereabout right the active region is the area that we're actually interested in when we are designing amplifiers this is when our vce value is larger than 0.3 our transistor is on and we have current gain from ic and beta times ib then similarly for NPN and PNP devices, this is the same for both of them. 
just VBEs will become VEBs and VCEs will become VECs. And that's basically it. The equations stay the same. The values, everything roughly the same. Okay, just for our NPN, this beat, uh, current, this IB current will be flowing into the transistor with our PNP device. This current will be flowing out of our transistor. So, no my, uh, major changes there. Okay, the next point here is BJT nonlinear characteristics. We know that we consider our BJT to be on at 0.7 volts, and it's a convenient choice. Okay, our transistor will be on between 0.6 to 0.8 volts, somewhere in between for silicon. 0.7 is a nice place to choose it, and that is why we always go with a 0.7. Okay, then we can take a look at this equation down here. Our transistor has PN junctions, so that makes it technically a very complex diode. Okay, so the curve of a BJT will be exactly the same as that of a diode. So VBE is the VD voltage and IC is the diode current so to speak okay so we have e function in here which shows us that this is not linear it's an exponential relation okay so ic is related to our vbe value in the exponential function right so we will look at this equation a bit more and we have this VT in here. This is the thermal voltage, which at room temperature we assume is point, uh, 0 0.025 volts or 25 millivolts. And there is a way to calculate this. This one is the problem in most PJT circuits, why your currents will change and your gain will change is this VT right here. And the reason why, if you have large inputs, you have a distorted output is because this, that this device is not very linear. Right, so we have to cater for these two when designing our amplifier the nonlinear aspect and the temperature dependency of our device. Right, so in this equation, IS is the saturation current and that is a process parameter for a transistor. Every transistor will have one of these. It's 10 to the power of minus 15 in that area. Okay, VB is what we put in. Thermal voltage is related to the current temperature. And that brings us to our thermal voltage. It can be calculated with Kt over Q, where K is the Boltzmann's constant, Q is the charge on electron, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Right, so that is everything that you need to know about the DC operation. Some of this goes into the AC operation of our BJT in any case, but we need to know that our device is temperature sensitive and it is nonlinear. And if we know when the device is on, when it's off, when we can use it as an amplifier, it's important to actually do our biasing of our transistor, which is the topic of the next video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.